Hello, everyone. How are you doing today? Great. So I'm graduating in a few months. And as I reflect back on my time in college, I've realized that the most useful parts of it were the extracurricular things I was involved with, and not so much the classes themselves. I want to talk about why that is and how we can change that. I'm sure many of you have heard all the buzz around artificial intelligence and how it's already integrated into every aspect of society and changing the way it works. I won't get into the specifics, but the disruptive nature of the technology stems from its ability to integrate vast amounts of information and sort through them and apply them at unimaginable speeds. Now let's take a look at our typical college lecture for a minute. We go to class. We get bombarded with vast amounts of information. And then we read the textbook to learn more information. Then I read our notes again and basically turn into a memorization machine. Then we apply and integrate that knowledge in very predictable homework and exam problems. And then we move on to the next class and repeat. It seems to me that we're learning to do exactly what our technology already does way better than us and somehow hope that this prepares us to thrive in a future integrated with AI. No wonder only 22% of current college graduates are reporting that their education prepared them for such a future. But isn't the point of education to prepare all of us for the future? Why is it falling short? I believe this disconnect stems from many of us still viewing higher education as a means for securing jobs. And so we continue to acquire skills that we needed in the past generations. In the 1900s, when universities started looking like today's, it was in response to the Industrial Revolution, when people needed to prepare for practical careers, like machinists, steam engine industry, factory workers, textile workers, and a lot of other roles that required linea linear thinking and conformity. Are a lot of those jobs around today? No. Most of those are actually automated jobs today. In our day and age, the technology surpasses humans by orders of magnitude when it comes to performing mundane, repetitive, or predictable jobs. And it's already moving towards medical diagnostics, stock market predictions, and other roles that we associate with those who have competitive college degrees. So there is no such thing as securing a degree in, or securing a job anymore. In our day and age, what we need is to learn how to complement AI. And I'm not saying that AI will replace all human jobs. I think it will shift us to take on those roles that allow us to complement AI. But we can't really predict what that exactly would look like. The only thing we do know is that our future will be more and more dynamic. And our roles will constantly change. And they won't always look like the jobs we have today. So we cannot go to college and continue preparing for today's jobs. And we cannot just be at the mercy of employers as these shifts happen. I believe we need to tweak our college education so that it prepares us to flourish in a fast changing future. We need to learn skills that complement machines and AI. And more broadly, I think we need to view higher education as a means for mastering what makes humans unique. The ability to think abstractly and innovatively. The ability to persuade and convince. And the ability to take risks, adapt, and problem solve. Imagine if in a day in college, we walk into class and instead of the professor saying, here is all of the information that a textbook that was written years ago shows about, let's say, biomaterials, the professor instead says, here is a pacemaker that as an engineer, you might want to improve on. And here is a little bit of background information on this material. And then we spend the majority of the class learning for ourselves what's good and bad about the current iteration, how it's being improved, and most importantly, coming up with our own ideas for making the material better. And we can even take it a step further and prototype our improvements. And who knows, students can get a patent out of it, start a business, save lives. And in a psychology class, instead of walking in and hearing, this is Alzheimer's, then schizophrenia, and everything else about this disease that I could fit into an hour-long lecture, what if we instead are described the disease and how a patient suffers from it 
and then are given an opportunity to learn for ourselves what the existing research says, and we can all discuss where there is room for improvement. Maybe we can even write a proposal for a study and change and improve how patients are being treated. And instead of learning about the intense segregation in Milwaukee in the name of an ethnic studies class that we're all required to take, and then just continuing on with our lives, what if we instead focused on problem solving through policy, through nonprofit, from engineering, and any other standpoint? And those are our final deliverables. Not an exam where we show how good we are at memorizing, or an unmotivating paper or project centered around already existing solutions. How much more exciting would that be? And how much more useful would it be to always think about what could be and realistically learn how we can make that a reality? Now that is a day in college where we're not made into memorization machines, but rather beings that complement memorization machines. We're taught to master the ability to stay in tune with current trends in the world, see areas of opportunities in our fields, and develop an entrepreneurial mindset. That mindset and these skills are absolutely invaluable. They give us the tools to create and innovate, the willingness to take risks and move past failures, and most importantly, the ability to see ourselves as job creators and not just as job seekers. Now that will carry anyone to the toughest or uncertain of times. There's a famous quote by Robert H. Scheller. Tough times never last, but tough people do. And tough people, I'd argue, are synonymous to those with these skills and an entrepreneurial mindset. This concept is not very new or abstract. I interned at MIT IDM this summer, and it's a master's program that's literally a hub for developing original thinkers and entrepreneurs. That bar reflects their classroom time spent on formal instruction in blue and creative problem solving time in orange. As you can see, for the majority of the day, these students are probed to think about what could be, and they're given the tools to make their ideas a reality. We know that failure, troubleshooting, and experience is our best teacher, and that is exactly how the program chooses to teach its students. And the key component here is the nature of the projects that they choose to work on. They solve real-world, meaningful problems in the Boston area so that students are constantly shown and forced to stay in tune with current trends, and they're motivated to put their best foot forward. And the cherry on top, they have presentations, numerous networking events, market pitches, where they convince and persuade people of their ideas, all the skills that are so uniquely human, and they learn all of this within just one program. The director of the program had a saying he would emphasize. We all have our own things we're good at and what we like, and there's others in the world that have their own expertise. If you're working on a problem that requires you to know what they know, pick up the phone, call them, and learn what you need to know. And then when you start working on the next problem, you do the same. This idea overcomes the notion of needing to be an expert to innovate. Or in our current societal terms, it overcomes the idea of needing multiple majors and that too, completing all of them before solving a multi-dimensional problem. For instance, my individual project during the internship was to find a solution for shin splints, a running-related injury that causes pain in your lower leg. The only thing I really knew about shin splints was with my personal experience with the injury and one class that I took in biomechanics. But of course, the project required me to understand business models, how current solutions in the market work, why they don't work, the physiology of the disease, and so much more, but all of which I was able to learn and apply in the form of a solution by applying this principle. Now imagine if we're all taught this way. Then in the future, when our roles change or if a problem really motivates us, we will have the mindset and the expertise and the skills to pivot and take things on without being officially trained to do so. It basically shifts us to the view of the idea of learning as something that is self-directed, and college becomes a safe zone area where we can practice applying knowledge and where we can practice failing. 
So now imagine if our entire undergraduate curriculum reflected this framework. Then not only will students gain expertise in the fields they want to gain expertise in, but they will also gain exposure to all the other fields integrated into that field and all the current advances being made. And even more so, it shifts our mindset to view the idea of learning as not something that's stagnant. Learning is something that is lifelong and we need to constantly stay in tune with current trends. And it makes us comfortable with doing so without feeling like we need a new formal degree every time. One of the most surprising statistics that I came across was that the majority of current college degree or college graduates are reporting that they would like to get officially retrained, either through another degree or through their employees or employers to adapt to a future integrated with AI. Officially retrained. But we've just talked about how that is not the type of training you will need for a fast changing future. So this whole model is not just exclusive to that one program. We can realistically apply that at UW and beyond. Sophomore year of college, my friends and I started a student mentors club on campus called Insight Wisconsin. Think student organization meets small scale design firm where students work on real world projects that do not have solutions yet. These projects range from astrobotonics to sports market predictions to developing apps. And all these students had to present their work multiple times a year to community members. When we surveyed them at the end of the year and asked them what skills they really took away from the inside experience, almost every single one of them mentioned these. The ability to stay in tune with current trends, the ability to see areas of opportunities in the world, and the ability to think like an entrepreneur all the skills necessary for thriving in a fast changing future. This does not mean that all of our members intend on graduating and pursuing new ideas or becoming entrepreneurs right out of college. But it does mean that they're equipped to follow their own ideas any day. Through Insight, we showed the value of the teaching style I'm advocating for and proved that it's realistically implementable without declaring it as a brand new major or a new model like IDM. And the best part of Insight was that we were comprised of students from 16 different majors. So the stigma about entrepreneurship and product development being just for engineering or business majors couldn't be more wrong. This style of learning is very much suited for all majors, especially if we allow students from multiple different departments to collaborate the way students in Insight do. And that is the vision I have for the future of education. I want to go to class every day and learn the basic knowledge, but then I want to start thinking about what could be. I want to work on real world problems in collaboration with other students interested in solving that same problem. Then when I graduate, I walk away with the skills, exposure, and mindset that will put me in the driving seat of progress in our fast changing future. Now, if preparation for this future is not enough of a reason for us to instill change, then I want us to take another look at how we learn today. How many of you have heard of Chegg? Yeah? Of course, all the students have as well. So Chegg is a website that has solutions to over 34,000 textbooks, and over 3 million students subscribe to this website today. So as you can probably already guess, as the number of mundane problems that students need to solve, or the amount of things they need to memorize increases, they lean towards services like Chegg. Now, before every university tries to find and ban all websites like Chegg, let's think about this for a minute. Students don't want to take the easy way out. They pay a lot of money to be here, and they took the initiative to apply to get here. So students want to learn just as much as the university wants to teach. It's just not motivating the way we're being taught right now. And in the era of our internet, where information and answers to already solved problems is so readily available, students take advantage of it. And rightfully so. Why not take advantage of our greatest technology rather than trying to parallel it or fight it? But universities can win here too. If students are assigned questions that do not have an answer yet, meaningful questions that do not have an answer yet, then they can use their existing methods to come up with a potential solution. 
then that would meet the goals of the teaching institution. It would prepare the students for the fast-changing future. It would solve real-world problems, and it would be motivating and interesting for us. When I told you initially that a lot of my classes haven't prepared me for the future, it's not because of the content, it's because of how they were taught. But we can change that. In fact, there's already a handful of classes, like BME Design, a few design courses in the Department of Human Ecology, an advanced genetics class that already apply a lot of these teaching styles that I'm talking about. But the majority of the students still spend their day in formal instruction settings. But I want our days to reflect this bottom bar. Ever wonder why the people we associate with such incredible success, like Travis Kalanick, Oprah, Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, all dropped out of college? Mark Twain even went as far as to say that he wouldn't let school interfere with his education. That should be a wake-up call. And you know what else all of these people have in common? They drive their own future and our future, and they are masters at these skills and the mindset that I've been talking about. Now, I'm not recommending that we all need to be entrepreneurs that change the world, or that's the only thing that'll be left for us to do. But we all should be equipped to drive our own future. Isn't that why we seek out higher education in the first place? And we all should be equipped to be resilient, adaptable, and most importantly, we should have the ability to make our thoughts a reality. And that is what higher education needs to teach us. And that should define what an educated person means. Then no matter how we choose to live our lives, it's a choice, an informed decision, not something we're forced into by changes in the world. And that's when we we'll finally meet the promise of higher education. We will all be educated for the fast-changing future. Thank you.